prevention is better than cure and it's a lot cheaper and it avoids those periods of crisis. On homes, the homes in this booklet are shared ownership and council homes. So they're not they're not they're not unaffordable for people in the borough. We're developing new shared ownership homes. There are, there are people that are poor in our shared ownership that earn less than forty thousand pounds a year and then as families. We are now developing though a second wave of homes called Hackney Living Rent which is for people to rent homes in the borough costing only a third of their income and that is directly geared to those that can't afford shared ownership, that are trapped in private renting or trapped at home and can't access council housing. So we're developing housing for people, keeping people in Hackney because I don't want to lose any more people like you. Thank you very much. So to, to the point about uh, uh, mental health, I think part of the problem is there's a big stigma about it in society and we need to be really vocal about the fact that that, that shouldn't be the case. You know, one in four people is going to be affected by it, you know, possibly more. I've, you know, I've got so many friends who've been affected by it and it's, you know, it's really hard to deal with when you feel like isolated even if you're just giving support. So I think it's a really good point about signposting. We need to say where the services are and try and help you know, cut that red tape that you're talking about. Um, I think also the, the preventative thing is not just about making sure that there's people they can speak to in schools. It's also about creating a society that, that creates better mental health. If we have you know, more access to nature, that's a massive part of it. Uh, I know that the schools that are around where I live, they're looking at rearranging them and they're going to reduce the amount of uh, playground space. And when I was a kid, the playground space is what kept me sane, like, honestly. And so I can't, I can't see that being, being a, a, an improvement. Um, uh, you talk about living in the borough. I mean, I've lived in my borough my whole life. The only reason I can live here is because I live at home. Like it's the only way. I'm lucky because I get on with my parents. It's you know, there's no way that I could live. I'd be living in Birmingham or something, and you know, I would feel like I'm missing out on all the great things that Hackney has to offer. So I, I really feel no, 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 no. But that's where I'd be able to afford. You know, that's why I go there because it's good. Um, uh, so yeah, the um, uh, yeah, we need to improve uh, social housing provisions and, uh, and tra transparency. We don't need to help renters. Uh, assume that you're a renter, and there's uh, a lot we can be doing around uh, private landlords, making sure that their uh, mandatory licensing across the whole of the borough, I think, will be really important. Again. We need to look at it at the grassroots. Renters' unions are really what's, what's, what's working as well. I mean, I'm part of a, of a you know, trade union myself, and I think that the unions for, for renters means you can get a better deal. Um, and also we need to have a, a list of uh, empty houses so that we can highlight what can be brought back into, into use. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with your sentiment entirely, and unfortunately, um, our mayor, as it were, again, has failed to be very specific about some of the problems we have about mental <coughs> illness and the management. You see, we are talking about the management of mental illness. And in my, um, in my manifesto, I've actually called for an immediate inquiry into the mental health service in Hackney um, to establish whether the mental health service in Acne, which the council is part of in the sense that it's, it, it has overall um, a relationship with the mental health service, it has councillors and other officials who sit on their various boards. And the fact is that, you know, it, it, it's a very serious problem because it's quite possible criminal offences are being, you know, are, are taking place in our mental health service in the sense that people who are not suffering mental illness are being detained in mental health hospital in the mental health hospitals and then injected with life-changing uh, pharmacological drugs which means that they become disabled for life. Now we need to investigate that and if we find that these allegations are true those individuals should be in prison Thank you, and thank you, thank you for our panelists for attending today. <laughs> I'd like to invite them to give a one-minute closing statement, um, starting with them. Um, as mayor, I would 100% focus on service quality and service delivery. Uh, 
uh, sorry, service quality and service delivery. I would spend the first day in office going through every single privatized and outsourcing contract in the sense of stopping private companies from ripping off the people of Hackney by pricing their, their services you know, um, to astronomical levels than you, can, than you can actually have the service. I would basically encourage local people like yourselves to bid for, uh, for the contract so that your talents and your skills can create employment and regeneration in Hackney. Thank you. Thank you. You probably understood from what I'm saying that it's really important that we work with the community and give, empower the community. The Green Party is all about taking power and giving it back to people at the level that it's being excised. So I think that's, that's the main thing I want to take away. Uh, if you're looking at the overall uh, picture of Hackney, it's very unlikely that anyone but Labour is going to be elected mayor here, but you've got a very good chance to elect other councillors that will hold the Labour Council to account, will improve the good ideas that they've got, and give them some other good ideas. So I think it's a really good opportunity wherever you are, look where you, what, 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 who your councillor candidates are, but also think about just getting people on who work really hard for you and who will give a different voice um, and, and, and bring new ideas to the table. But uh, thank you very much for coming today. I echo okay, thank you to everyone that's come here today and to uh, the community centre for organising it. There are 140 odd ideas in the manifestos on your uh, chairs. We've discussed a lot of the issues that they're designed to tackle and respond to this evening. Uh, this is an important time, it's a big decision on May the 3rd. Who do you want to run Hackney? But as Alistair said, we don't, I don't do that alone. I need 57 Labour councillors to work with me, <laughs> hold me to account, represent their communities, and bring about real change. And that's what we've done over the last 20 months that I've been there. I also want to start new, big discussions and approaches to the way we make decisions in Hackney. So having a big conversation with our young people, making sure that older people can design their older people's strategy, opening up the council in terms of its data, making sure that we have one of the most open open and transparent and inclusive councils that we can have, and also bringing more parts of our organisation into public ownership. So municipal energy company run for and by the people of Hackney and their elected representatives, delivering on climate change and delivering income that we can then spend on communities and public service. If you believe in the types of things I stand for, then vote Labour on May the 3rd. Party. We also have members and supporters who belong to other political parties because we know that real people's lives have many intersections of privileges and disadvantage. We're very happy to cooperate with people with other views on certain topics if we can achieve practical change. And that's why it's been a real pleasure to me to be on such a diverse panel tonight. I'm often on a legal panel where not only am I the only woman on the panel, but I'm the only non-white person. And I would like to request other parties to, to open their minds to what other people have to say. I don't want to be in a council area where there's a monolith of people who are all whipped to say the same thing. <laughs> and I'm disappointed. <laughs> we, we produced our manifesto for the general election before all the other parties. We wrapped it up with ribbon okay. to label on it saying nickable policies. We've always invited other parties to share our policies and we do the same today. 
And it's a disappointment to me when other people are defensive and they want to say that I called somebody racist and so forth, rather than listening to what I'm actually saying. And we do put caring, which is so often done by women, at the top of our agenda. We want to see that value. And what I heard from this lady was not really a story about CPZs. It's a story that I felt as a mother of three who works hard. Our policy of free universal childcare is going to revolutionise things. And if I'm mayor, I would like to see Hackney leading the way using the limited resources we have in a really innovative way, a visionary way for Hackney's future. Once again, I'd like to thank the candidates. I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. Um, finally, just before we finish, I'd like to invite the local election candidates, the case of all candidates, each party, to give the one-minute pitch on why we should vote for your party in the local election, in the case of all elections. So, what, what, what? Why are we leaving case of all? No, that's messy. Because the community says that it's in the case of all and on case of all. Do we have to make a case of all? Yeah, there's, uh, there's actually one missing. Uh, sorry, the. Uh, okay, so they're getting a. Uh, Hi all. Uh, thanks for staying for so long. I know it's very long for so long, but I won't take so much of your time. Um, I will be standing as a candidate for the Lib Dems in the Kayser Ward. Um, Lib Dems have been in this ward for a long time, and hopefully, with your ongoing support, we can continue the great work that our councillors of the past have done, including Ian. Uh, that was a cool who's stepping down, and also Abram Jacobson. Um, at first hand, I've seen the issues and problems that the residents of not only Caseneth Ward are, are going through, but also the whole of Hackney. Um, as many of you are aware, I work at MMCC as an advisor, um, dealing with lots of the community um, with their day-to-day -day issues that they're going through. And also, we had the pleasure of our mayor visit us and see the impact that our work has had on our clients and they literally broke down in tears and the mayor would realise that yes, the work we've been doing is immense. Um, we need the support of all the locals here um, to continue this work, to do case work, which is the most important thing that I believe, to stand up for the rights of the people and also to give everyone a voice and a fair voice and some, so, someone to take it to the council to ask them the questions that need to be answered. If they are just working together, if there's all Labour councillors, it's not going to be so fair and it's not going to be something that is going to be centered at school. So I would like you to vote on May the 3rd for us Lib Dems in Kaysenham and all over Hackney and let's get some more variety in this borough. Thank you very much. We'll be quick. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for waiting. Um, my name is Anthony McMahon. I'm one of your Labour Party candidates um, for the local councillor in Kazano. Um, if elected, I pledge to work to improve air quality here in Kazano, um, working with you all to reduce pollution around our schools, to promote clean transport through delivering new electrical vehicle charging points, uh, and by working to increase cycling and pedestrian friendly routes both in Cajun and in our area here in North Hackney. And I also pledge to support uh, the, the local generation of clean energy again, um, helping to make Hackney a carbon neutral borough. Thank you all for staying, and thanks so much for hosting. Um, I'm so my name is Sam. I grew up in Kaysno. I live in the ward, as did my parents and grandparents. I work in education and youth work, 
and I'm very proud to be a Hackney School Governor. I feel lucky to have grown up in such a diverse community as Cazano, and one of our central pledges is to support the no place for hate strategy in our community. If elected, we work alongside all community organisations, schools and youth groups to ensure that Cazano is a beacon of tolerance and respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Caroline, uh, and I'm pleased to work with residents and ward officers on community projects with a particular focus on safety, ownership and pride in our communities. We recognise that safeguarding youth is a vital aspect of crime prevention, and we'll work closely with the council on youth mentoring as well as apprenticeship schemes. Sam, Tony and I have been out speaking with residents for months and months now. We have uh, got to know their concerns, We've discovered common issues. We're a dedicated team and we really want to continue working together after May the 3rd. I also want to add that we're really proud of our mayor. We do believe that he runs a campaigning council because he wants to hear residents' points of view, because he wants us to represent residents' points of view. This is a transparent and open council, and we're really glad that Phil's here to kind of show that today. Um, and thank you so much for having us here again. Thank you. Independent candidate, um, Bruce Spencer, was also invited, and I did um, inform the Conservative Party as well um, that this issue will be taking place in the case of the board. Um, so, in conclusion, I want to thank you, uh, thank all the candidates who have come here. I want to thank um, members of my staff from the Isar Children's Centre, Isar Nursery, from the Northern Children's Community Centre. I want to thank all of you um, because without you this event would not have been the success it is. Um, we've had hustings before and I think well, this is one of the best hustings that we've actually had in a quite a long time. So I really appreciate and I congratulate my new centre coordinator who is a wonderful person. Thank you very much.